So this video is real life, all right? I figured why not do a video on just a quick grocery haul when I need to break a fast. This isn't gonna be a long video, it's gonna be short. It's just real life. You see, I just dumped off a bunch of recycling stuff. I just moved into a house, so we just had a bunch of cardboard and stuff, and I'm starving. If you look at the time, I don't know if you can see that. It's 2.10, which means I've been fasting for about 17 hours. By the time I go to the store and get a couple things, it'll be about, I don't know, 17, 18 hours. So we'll be in good shape. So the whole purpose of this video is to show you a quick grocery haul, what I'm gonna do if I go into the grocery store and I need to pick specific things to break my fast strategically when I'm on the run. So let's go ahead, let's hit the road, and I think I'm just gonna head to a Walmart that's down the road. Explain a few different things as I go here, but I'm gonna talk about breaking a fast from a non ketogenic perspective just to keep things simple if you're doing keto all you're gonna have to do is just omit the carbohydrate recommendation that I'm gonna give you in this particular video so we're gonna make it easy just by breaking down carbs and protein but if you're doing keto you just omit the carbs and I'll explain things as I go and I'll explain a little bit more when I get back to the truck let's rock and roll now those of you that watch my videos know that vlog style is not my normal style uh, but the thing is I don't have my team with me right here I'm up in Northern California a bit more so we're just trying to knock this out as quickly as we can and I'll have my team edit it back up when we get back to the office. We're doing this one super simple, just hand basket style. And now I cannot stop looking at that pimple on my neck, so I'm sorry that you guys have to deal with that. I just woke up this morning and had it, so I don't know what it is. Maybe it's all the stress of moving and things like that. But anyhow, sorry you have to look at that. All right, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna go to the meat section first and see if they've got anything that we can utilize on a quick whim. This I'm on the go, so I don't really have the means to cook anything unless I wanted to cook it on my intake manifold, which I don't think is gonna happen. So this whole area, the actual fresh meat, is just not gonna fly, simply not gonna work. So let's see what they've got over here. Maybe we can take a look at the deli meat, which generally is going to be a no-fly zone, but let's check it out. Well, actually, let's take a quick pit stop here because this isn't the end of the world. It wouldn't be terrible, but it's definitely not a first choice. It's gonna be the yogurt section. Okay, now here's the thing. Yogurt, although it has a probiotic effect, still very inflammatory because of the casein proteins. Now the casein proteins are what triggered inflammatory response within the body because they're hard for the body to break down. Something known as BCM7, which is basically what it is, is it ends up acting as an opioid within the body. So not something you really wanna have come into your body when you're super sensitive after breaking a fast, but let's see what they've got in mind. Okay, so when we're breaking a fast, we wanna keep it as lean as we possibly can. So in this case, I would say, even if you're keto, I want you to go with a 0% yogurt. Now, I don't even think they have any organic Greek yogurt, but I would go with a 0% simply because we don't wanna be having the fat come into the equation. You wanna make sure you get unsweetened, unflavored, nothing else, okay? Your body's gonna be very sensitive at the end of a fast. Let's see what else they've got here. And make sure you're not going for non-fat, make sure you're going for, or excuse me, non-fat regular, make sure you're going for non-fat Greek, because it's gonna have a significantly higher protein content. Let's see, take a look at this. 52 grams of protein, if you were to eat the whole container, versus, let's see if we take a look at this one. Not nearly as much in the way of protein. Eight grams per serving, 170 grams, versus, 170 gram serving is going to give you 18 grams. Okay, so double, more than double the protein content. But again, remember, when you're dealing with yogurt, it's not ideal to break a fast. So let's see what they've got in some other meat departments, or actually, let's take a look at cottage cheese really quick. All right, here's the thing with cottage cheese. Look at those ingredients. Non-fat milk, cream, and then it has a bunch of other stuff. Carrageenan, which is known to be inflammatory. In fact, in some specific research settings, they use carrageenan to trigger inflammation in test subjects. Literally, they use carrageenan to trigger inflammation in order to test things like anti-inflammatory drugs and non-steroidal anti-inflammatories against that stuff. So we have to be really careful with that. So again, we're breaking a fast. Our body is sensitive. Every single thing that you put in your body right now, your body's going to absorb. So you don't want to be taking in a bunch of, of garbage, right? Now, unfortunately, the options at Walmart are always going to be slim pickings. So the dairy, again, if you're in a pinch, is really easy, but I think we can find something better. I used to know some people that would just straight up eat the, uh, or drink the egg whites. 
Okay, that works if you're like on a mission, but the hard part is you need vitamin K to actually utilize that. So you need the yolks to really utilize that protein better anyway. But also the egg white is the most inflammatory part of the egg. Okay, remember that is what is feeding the yolk, which means it has a lot of the immunoglobulins, the IgA, the IgE, which is going to trigger an immune response in your body. It's there to grow and nurture a baby chicken, which means it's passing the antibodies just like mother's milk would, right? So we don't wanna be doing that, especially when we're sensitive. So I think you're catching the drift here. When I'm trying to break my fast, I want it to be clean, I want it to be super pure, and quite frankly, a little bit bland, okay? I still can't find the deli meat here, but the short of it is, I don't really want you using it. I just hope I can find some to show you. Ah, here we go. So when people are in a pinch, a lot of times they'll say, oh, I need some protein, so I just want some deli meat. I understand the premise of that, but even if you go with, say, natural deli meat, let's just take this one and pick on this one for a minute. Oscar Mayer, no antibiotics ever. That's a great sign, I will say that, because there's no artificial ingredients. And when they say no antibiotics ever, that does mean that they're not given any kind of antibiotics for their entire life. Otherwise, the FDA allows them to give them antibiotics up until 30 days from harvest. So you need to look for that no antibiotics ever. Let's see what's in here. So we got turkey breast, we've got uh, potato starch, honey. It's just, it's garbage. It's not real good quality meat, okay? So I'm seeing if I can find anything here. Let me take a look. Not really finding much. I'm gonna give you some better solutions here in a minute. If you're in an absolute, absolute pinch, I would say that you could eat some of this uh, natural Oscar Mayer. It wouldn't be the end of the world. It's just not something you want to be doing all the time. So I'm not going to grab that because again, let's see. Youch. If I were to eat that whole thing, I'd have 2,000 milligrams of sodium. Now I'm not a, you know, opposed to sodium, but when it's 2,000 milligrams in one sitting, that's a lot. Okay, so the real reason that I'm not a fan of deli meat isn't because it's low quality protein, it's because of something known as advanced glycation end products. Now, when you consume any kind of food, you're gonna have some degree of oxidation that occurs, right? So basically your cells react with the foods that are there, you have a little bit of waste, but advanced glycation end products are where sugar reacts with proteins within your body and they glycate. And what that means is essentially think of a caramelized onion. So you put onions in a pan, and they react with the sugar in themselves and they get caramelized and they crystallize, right? Well, that happens inside your body and it creates a lot of free radical damage, which means it causes a lot of stress on your body. So the protein that you are consuming is usually glycated and it ends up making it so that you're not feeling as good, but you're also not utilizing the protein to its full advantage. So in essence, you're kind of wasting your money. Sure, you're gonna get the protein, but the free radical effect within your body is so extreme, it's just not worth it. So I would honestly opt for the yogurt over the deli meat. That's just what's wild. Yogurt is pretty inflammatory. A lot of people don't like dairy, but it's better than this deli meat. So go for the yogurt and it'll save you some money. But I wanna to go to the canned fish section because I think that we're gonna find something there that's a little bit better. I'm having a hard time navigating this Walmart. It's not one I'm usually going to. Let's see here. Uh -huh. Here's snacks. Let's see. Oh, let's stop here and show you something real quick. Talked about this in other videos, but if you haven't seen it, you're gonna be blown away by this. Okay, so almonds, right? Let's take this one for example. Good old fashioned regular almonds. We got lightly salted that have been roasted. You'd think they'd be healthy, and to a degree they are because you have a good degree of mono and polyunsaturated fats that are good for you. But look at this. Almonds, and then what do they cook them in? Vegetable oil. Okay, and the other thing is canola oil, safflower, and or sunflower oil which means that they don't really know what is in there. They could be any form of omega-6 fat. The point is, is you're taking a perfectly healthy fat coming from an almond and you're adding a fat that is not good. Okay, canola oil is not good stuff, terrible oil. So it's interesting, we take a good heart healthy, quote, fat, and then we go ahead and we completely adulterate it by roasting it in canola oil. I just don't understand why they would do that. At least if you go with like dry roasted macadamia nuts, they're dry roasted. That's what that means when they say dry roasted. It means they don't add extra oil, okay? So they just take the macadamia nuts, they put them on a baking sheet and they dry them. Super, super simple and very, very easy and a better choice for you. But again, it's not gonna come into application when you're breaking a fast. We need to keep fats out of the equation. So why are we keeping fats out of the equation? Why do I keep saying that? Because when you break a fast, you're insulin sensitive. So it means whatever you put in your body, your body's gonna glom onto it. It's gonna absorb really quick. So that means if you're consuming uh, 
fats, right? When you break a fast, your body's gonna want to absorb those, which means you could have the potential of storing them a lot easier. So we just have to be really careful with that. Remember, you're insulin sensitive. So if you spike your insulin by having some carbohydrates, that's fine. But if you have some carbohydrates in conjunction with fats, then you stimulate what are called uh, acylation stimulating proteins, which end up triggering a bunch of potential fat accumulation when you look at different studies. So it's just not worth the risk, okay? But here is something very interesting. If you are doing carbs, if you're not doing keto, uh, that could be beneficial for you. Puffed rice. Okay, now we've got rice cakes, we've got all these things, but I like these things. And I'm gonna grab some of these because these are perfect if you're not on keto. Sure, they're a grain, and I can say a lot of negative things about grains. I usually try to avoid uh, rice, oats, things like that, because grains still have a prolamin effect crossover into the brain. Uh, for those of you that are nerds, basically what that means is it can still have the same kind of response uh, that gluten would have in your body. But first of all, these are organic, so that does help quite a bit. But here's what's cool. When you look at rice, it's got starch molecules that are bound together like this, right? Okay, and then what happens is once they're puffed, they inject air and the glucose molecules separate. What does that really mean? That simply means that because air has been injected into the rice, into the starch, it separates the individual glucose molecules, making it so that the body absorbs it faster. Now I know that's kind of complicated and I'm abbreviating, but that's the point here. Very, very quick absorption, which means very high insulin spike, which you might be thinking, why do I want to spike my insulin? Well, you're breaking a fast, so you want to consume something that is going to spike your insulin so that it gets into storage quickly, but we want to do it without fat. We just want to restore muscle glycogen, break our fast with something controlled where we're controlling the insulin spike and then we have some lean protein with it and then we're good okay and then a little bit later down the line we have a more solid meal so i'm gonna get some of these these are perfect for breaking my fast a couple bucks i'll be good to go you can also get regular rice cakes they're just these aren't organic uh sure they're a cup like a dollar cheaper but then be careful with these because although these are still rice cakes look at that they still have whole grain brown rice then uh, a bunch of other stuff sugar fructose maltodextrin Eh, not too good. We don't really want that. Sorry about the noise. Gotta find that canned fish section or canned meat in general. Hmm. Okay, I found it, but it's a crazy. Okay, I found it, but it's a crazy, crazy busy aisle. So I'm gonna grab what I need, go to a more quiet aisle so I can explain it. Plus, I don't wanna get kicked out. There's an employee right behind me. Okay, that was intense. I had to go to another aisle. All right, I'll show you what I got here. Okay, so I got chunk light tuna. Now, not everyone likes tuna, but the cool thing with the chunk light tuna in water is chunk light is going to have less of a mercury issue than albacore. And although this isn't any kind of sustainably caught or anything like that, it's not farm raised, okay? It's going to be wild caught because it's tuna. But the interesting thing is you want it in water, okay? You don't want to ever get it in oil because then you're disrupting the fatty acid profile anyway. But I like this anyway. Look how lean that is, okay? So we're looking at a half a gram of fat. Super, super lean, if you can see that better. Okay, half a gram of fat in a one pouch. Super clean, super easy, moderately low sodium. Now, if you notice that they uh, have Wild Planet at whatever store you go to, this isn't a push for Wild Planet. I just know that their stuff is really clean. So their motto is that they're one, so are wildly good promise. Uh, usually it says, yeah, 100% pole and line caught. So not using any nets, so really high quality stuff. This is albacore, which is not going to be my first choice. Wild Planet also has canned chicken, so sometimes I get the canned chicken, but don't get any kind of canned chicken because canned chicken has a bunch of modified food starch in it. So there's only like one or two brands of canned chicken that you can get. So if you can eat fish, tuna's gonna be your best bet. Tuna and these little rice cake things, and then I've got like one other thing to get. Now this is totally on the whim. This isn't planned, this isn't anything weird. So I don't have like a whole lot of detail to give you other than what I need for my personal practical application. Now I did a video once before where I talk about the combination of regular glucose and fructose, okay? So what that means is a little bit of fruit and a little bit of carbohydrate, like a regular carbohydrate, and it does some pretty interesting things. Basically, they ride different transporters into the body. So you can only absorb so much in the way of regular carbohydrates at one point in time. 
but you can absorb a little bit more of carbohydrates if you mix them with a little bit of fructose. Basically, you're altering what's called the S-glute transporter and uh, GLUT5 transporters. Complicated thing, but basically what it means is if I have a little bit of fruit with this, a tiny bit of fruit, not enough to really have a lot of fiber, but enough fruit to give me a little bit of fructose, I'm going to absorb the tuna that much faster. And what that means is I will be ready to have a more robust, more fun meal 60, 90 minutes later. Okay, so now that I've got my regular glucose coming from those rice rollers, rice cake things, and I've got my protein from the tuna or the albacore, I just need to find something simple, like possibly a, a little tangerine or something. I really wanna go organic when it comes down to breaking my fast. I would like to do strawberries because they're clean and easy, but I don't think that I'm going to find organic strawberries here at Walmart, at least not right now. We're too close to Watsonville, Monterey, where there's a lot of uh, a lot of farms, salinas, things like that. So there's not a lot of organic right now. You might be thinking, what about veggies though? Well, the thing is veggies are great and you want the vitamins from them, but you're not going to want them right when you break a fast because it's going to slow down the absorption of everything else, right? The fiber, everything from the veggies slows down absorption, which is good usually, but we want whatever we're consuming right now to just be our quick break fast snack and then we eat a more robust meal later. So we wanna have it so it absorbs as quick as possible. Lean protein that'll get through your system. Low fat so we don't have fat slowing down and instigating cholecystokinin. Uh, we also want the starches that are gonna absorb quick if you're not on keto. If you're on keto, you just would eat the protein and maybe put some hot sauce on it. Don't add fats, add the fats later on and that's gonna make life a little bit easier because simply put, you're gonna be able to not absorb it in the wrong way. Forget it, I'm just gonna get an apple because I know I can get an organic one and then I just won't eat the skin so I don't get the fiber. I'm getting stressed out here, it's so busy. Okay, hopefully they have organic apples. I'll see organic ones. Uh, I'm gonna get an orange. I usually don't like citrus, but at least we get a little bit of vitamin C out of this. And that's going to have a little bit of an effect on free radicals in the body, so better than nothing. And that's it guys, super simple. I'm gonna go check this out at self-checkout and we'll talk a little bit more about it in the car. Ouch, that's expensive tuna, so it might not be the choice that you go for normally. I promise I keep it short. So here's what we ended up with. We went with the organic puffed rice, simply because it's high glycemic and it's a perfect way to break your fast. Here's the thing, like I said, I would ideally not be using grains. What is the best kind of starch that I would recommend? probably a potato that has been baked or microwaved with nothing on it, okay? Because what's gonna happen is the same premise as when we puff the rice here, we can do the same thing with a potato. So what that means is that the heat will make it so that the glucose molecules separate, and that means they'll absorb faster in your system, but we get to do it without the grains, okay? Just trust me on the grains thing. I'll link out to some of my videos that talk about grains down below in the description, so I can just don't waste your time here. But this is going to be a close second. Then we got a little bit of an orange. I'm only gonna eat a third of this. I don't need all this sugar. I need like 10 grams of fructose. So I need like a third, maybe a quarter of this orange. And then I'm gonna have probably two of these rice rollers. So one rice roller is 11 grams of carbs. So I'm gonna do 22 grams of carbs from that. And then probably about eight to 12 grams of carbs coming from the fruit. So that's gonna be 30 grams or so of total carbs. Even if I was keto, I could still break my fast with this. It would knock me out of ketosis for an hour or so, but then I keep my carbs so low the rest of the day, it doesn't even matter anyway. It just allows me to absorb the carbohydrates, absorb the protein a little bit better into my muscles. So if you are doing keto and you like to weight train and you like to work out hard, this isn't still a bad way to break a fast. Just know that you're going to knock yourself out of keto for a short amount of time. But bouncing in and out of ketosis is not always the end of the world. In fact, a lot of people like Dave Asprey talk about how metabolic flexibility is all about getting your body fat adapted, utilizing fats, and then migrating back over to carbohydrates. So usually what I'll do is I'm usually keto about nine or 10 months out of the year, and then I'll have two or three weeks stents where I introduce carbohydrates for that strategic purpose. And right now it just so happens to be one of those times. I actually like how I feel and it's not like I'm an anti-carb guy, so it's not a huge deal. Anyway, back to the protein. I went with the tuna. Not everyone can do tuna. I understand that. Otherwise, do uh, the yogurt would be a good mix. You could crumple this up in your Greek yogurt, put a little bit of orange in your Greek yogurt, and you're off to the races. And then what I want you to do is 
maybe 90 minutes from now after you eat this little snack, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna eat your normal meal as you normally would, whether it's keto or not keto. This is just the important window that you break your fast with. Now, let me show you this receipt really quick. Had it not been for the expensive Wild Planet tuna that was $4, I would have gotten out of here for less than five bucks and would have had my strategic breakfast meal. And these, I'm only gonna eat two of them and they're individually wrapped. So I have three breakfast meals in terms of my carbohydrates. So let's divide the, those rollers by three. So roughly we've got $1.20, then we've got a dollar worth of tuna. So that's $2.20 and then 68 cents for the orange. So basically for roughly what I'm gonna eat, about $2.50, I got a strategic breakfast meal and it's gonna prevent me from doing terrible things. What I mean by that is doing terrible things like being hungry at the end of a fast and going through the drive through things I used to do, right? Be strategic. So even when you're in a pinch, I could run into Walmart and in a couple of minutes, I could grab this stuff and I could absolutely control how I broke my fast and then I could get on with my day. Anyhow, long-winded explanation because that's how I roll. As always, I do want you to keep it locked in here on my channel, but one more quick thing for you guys. If you can, please, please, please do check out ButcherBox down below in the description. That way you can always get, even when you're traveling, get your grass-fed, grass-finished meat and all your meat delivered to where you're going. So actually at my house that I'm staying at right now, I had ButcherBox send me a box of meat so that I could have grass-fed, grass-finished meat. And it worked out really, really well because then I didn't have to go to the grocery store, but I had everything there and it's super, super affordable. So they're a big sponsor of this channel. They really hook up all the people that subscribe to my channel and all of that stuff. So basically they're just a really great organization that delivers meat to your doorstep. So check them out down below in the description. If you want to support me, support them. It's a great way to help. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you soon.